Hello and welcome, my name is Robert Matura and welcome to a new segment that I'm going to be having on my channel or a series that I'm going to be having on my channel. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to be answering a bunch of different questions um, based on my opinions and my experience and like what my coaches have said and what other people have said and things on the internet. So hopefully this will help you out. So let's get into the first few questions. All right, so the first question is, should you roll out or stretch after a run for better recovery? And <clears throat> basically the answer to this is, there is no study to my knowledge or that I've heard of and I've heard other people say this as well. There is no study that shows that stretching does help you um, after a run. <clears throat> you know, a lot of people think it does and they do it and uh, but there's no actual study that says, yes, it has been proven. It is. There's been studies where it shows uh, nothing worse or better happens. Um, but there are studies out there that show rolling out is um, better for recovery than not rolling out. Um, so if you're kind of wondering, rolling out would be better. And that's because it breaks up the fascia and allows it to heal um, better. And it also helps with injury prevention as well. The next question is, should you taper before a time trial? So... I actually found this question very interesting. I saw it on the internet and um, the answer that I saw and the answer that makes a lot of sense is to do a smaller taper. So what you do is instead of doing a longer, more gradual one where your legs feel more and more fresh, it's kind of just you do a smaller one right before it. So your, your legs are still feeling fresh before the time trial, but it's allowing you to not interrupt your training quite as much since it's not as big of a deal. It's not a race where you really need to prepare for it. And um, doing a small taper can actually help injury prevention because you're doing a little bit less work before you're about to do a lot of work. So yeah, that is the answer to that question. Another question is, should you run with sore legs? Now this is a bit of a more beginner question. Um, and the general answer to that is yes. However, not always. If you're feeling chronically fatigued and always sore, and always feeling like sluggish on a run, then there's probably a different uh, something else going on. Um, but mostly running on sore legs is actually good. And a big reason why people do recovery runs is to train their legs to run on fatigued legs. So if you're already tired and then running on them, it gets them used to running while they're tired. And so as long as you're taking enough rest to feel fresh at certain points, then it would actually be a really good thing because it teaches your legs um, that it's okay to run when they're fatigued. This next question is, should you roll out your IT band? So I saw this meme a while ago and it was basically implying that it's bad to roll out your IT band, which I did not know that most people thought that. And it turns out quite a few people out there in the running community think that you shouldn't. Um, but what I've learned since then is that your IT band is actually really, really durable. And so rolling out is not actually gonna do a whole lot. So whether you're trying to do that for an injury or whether you think it's bad, it's really not gonna do a whole lot. Uh, personally, I have found it to help with certain knee pain that I've had because it does connect to your hip and your hip uh, is involved with the pain that you have in your lower leg. So a better solution if you're having, let's say, knee pain would be to roll out your hip because it's more likely that your hip is tight and that's what's causing the knee pain down below. But it also could be because of a, a tight IT band. And I have had a coach and I've asked him this question and he's very experienced and he said personally he doesn't really think there's anything wrong with rolling out your IT band so that's the answer to that another question is is barefoot running better than running with shoes now I think in the first place a long long time ago I would definitely say yes barefoot running is much better because it keeps your foot strike natural and things like that however now with the industrialization and concrete and asphalt and harder surfaces everywhere, I think it makes a lot more sense to have support because then it is lessening the impact on the ground when you're on harder surfaces than say you would be on grass or dirt. So I think nowadays shoes are very important, but I think naturally humans are meant to run on their bare feet, which would make a lot of sense. The next question is how many miles per week should you run to have a good 5k time? This one is completely based on your previous experience. It really depends on what you've run in the past and generally each training cycle, you wanna be increasing your mileage a little. So say you have a track season or a spring season and then you have a fall season or a summer season and when you're doing your taper and you're going down and then you're starting a new cycle, at that new cycle, if it is 
the same type of running. So in, so an example of where it would be different is if you're doing cross country and then you're doing track where your mileage is different. But if say you're doing track and then track again, you probably want to increase your mileage a tiny bit just so you are getting more of an effect because that lower mileage is not going to affect you as much and it, you're not going to improve as much from it since you've already done it and you're already to that fitness level. What should you eat before you run? So the biggest word here is experiment. Experiment with eating more and eating less and just knowing how your body reacts to things and trying a lot of different things. Some people can have a really, really full stomach running and that's how they really like it. And there's a lot of people out there who like to run an, an empty stomach and like to have nothing and that that's just what works for them. You can experiment having a lot, you can have experiment having nothing or having a little like just a banana here or something like that. So yeah, just biggest word here is experiment and try different things and find out what works for you. This last question is actually a really, really interesting question and it's something you don't really think about and the question is, should you listen to music while you run? Now, for most people, this is a no-brainer. It's like, you can or you can't, it doesn't really matter. Um, but here is a clip of David Goggins on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast talking about that and I just found this really, really interesting. Yeah. And I know how to self-motivate. A lot of motherfuckers don't know how to self-motivate, man. Like, we like to put the headphones on, yeah. like, like before the big game, and listen to the music. Yeah. What the fuck do you do when the headphones come off, bro? It's you in your own mind. Right. I know how to do that. So basically, what he had to say is, you shouldn't. That was the conclusion he came to. Um, you can decide what you will of that if you think you should or you shouldn't. Um, but yeah. Well, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, it would mean a lot to me if you hit that like button and hit that subscribe button because I am going to be posting a lot more than I have. I know that I've been inconsistent. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Peace out.